Okay, come on, Tally, we've only got two weeks to level our new Blood Elf characters before the pre-patch is over and Burning Crusade Classic launches! Let's get questing! Yeah, let's get to it. Hop on, Effie, I'll give you a ride. Tally, are you riding a hippo? Oh, I don't know, let me check. Why? Yes, I am. In classic? How are you riding a hippo? Oh, it's quite simple, Evertel. Money. Hang on, is that our joint account card? Uh, maybe. Are you getting on the hippo or not? It flies! Are you spending all our money just to make classic leveling easier? No, Evie, don't be silly. I don't need to level, I got a boost. Tally! Uh, don't worry, I got loads of cool transmog as well. You love transmog! There's no transmog in classic, Tally. Ah, uh, correction, there's no transmog for people with no money to spend. For ballers like me, kotick has got it covered. Where are you going? Leveling. Okay, cool. Well, let me know when you get to 60. I'll just be waiting here with my cool new sword that I looted. And when I say looted, obviously, I mean bought. Ah, oh, yeah. Knowledge is power. Hello, Internet. Taliesin here, and welcome to the weekly reset. Taliesin and Evertel's wondrous wisdom show in a week, where there is, as usual, Shadowlands news with 9.1 PTR updates and tweaks and speculation as to, you know, when this longest opening patch in World of Warcraft expansion history will be allowed to move on. And far more importantly, we have the Burning Crusade classic news. And of course, I mean, we have the TBCC news, because not only do we now have a release date, 1st of June 2021, not only do we have a pre-patch release date, 18th of May 2021, that's next week, but we have just about all of the details about pricing that has been the subject of intense speculation for months now, released into the wild to become instead the subject of intense discussion. <laughs> and internet, you know how we love an intense discussion around these parts, so let's get started. Started. Oh, no, wait. Let's get started. And I think the best way to do this is to give you the overall info dump and then go back and look at each point individually. So, first of all, the Dark Portal Pass, which is a fancy way of saying the level 58 boost. When the pre-patch goes live on May the 18th, and with it, all the new spell and ability changes, new talents and other gameplay tweaks, as Classic moves from Vanilla to Burning Crusade, as well as access to Blood Elves and Draenei and Alliance Shaman and Horde Paladins, players will have the option of purchasing the Dark Boosty Pass for $39.99, or your regional equivalent. There will only be one boost allowed per account, it can't be used on Blood Elves or Draenei, and as well as awarding a high enough level to step through the Dark Portal on June the 1st, it gives you Apprentice Riding Skill. Amount to use your apprentice riding skill. Up to four rune cloth bags, green gear, and some flight paths unlocked. Basically, all that we knew before. The price is the news here, which, in case you missed it, is $39.99. Also coming with the pre patch on the 18th, though, is the Burning Crusade Classic Digital Deluxe Edition, which includes that boost, 30 days of game time, a Dark Portal Hearthstone for use in TBCC, a toy which makes your footsteps glow all green like Illidan, and two Phase Hunter mounts, a high-res modern-looking one for use in retail, and a much more beautiful janky TBC model one for use in TBC. See, the price of the Deluxe Edition is $69.99. Which, no, I will resist giving any opinion right now. Like I say, this is the info dump, we'll be coming back for discussion later. But it is worth noting at this stage that players do not need to buy the Deluxe Edition or the Dark Portal Pass to play Burning Crusade Classic. The expansion itself, just like OG Classic, is essentially free. All you need is a current subscription. Also, coming on May the 18th, which is turning into a pretty busy day, let's be honest, is the Classic Era Cloning Service, which, and I've seen a lot of confusion about this too, so I'm gonna try and explain it as simply as I can. At the moment, Classic characters play on the existing Classic servers. I, personally, have all my characters on Xandalar Tribe, because it's the best server full of the best, most awesome people. When the Burning Crusade Classic pre-patch goes live on May 18th, every single existing Classic server will update and become a Burning Crusade classic server, and the first time you log in, you will be given a choice. Keep your classic character on that server and be in Burning Crusade classic now, or transfer 
transfer them to a newly created Classic Classic server, which will remain in OG Vanilla Classic forevermore. Whether you decide to stay on the server and play TBCC, or move to the Classic Classic server and remain in Vanilla, it is free and won't cost you anything. However, you also have a third option. To keep your characters on the server and roll over to Burning Crusade Classic, and have a copy of your character also moved to a Classic Classic server, so you now have two of the same character in two different expansions. And if you would like to take that third option, then you will need to use the Classic Era cloning service, which has been announced as costing $35 per character. So, that's the info dump. I'm sure you have some thoughts. So do I. Shall we start with the pre-patch date? Because with the game going full fat live on June the 1st, and the pre-patch arriving on... Oh, what's the date again? May the 18th! That gives classic players two weeks of pre-patch fun times to level new characters and play about with the new talents and abilities. In contrast, the original Burning Crusade pre-patch lasted over 40 days and didn't give access to Draenei and Blood Elf characters because hashtag seriously loads of changes like everywhere we're done caring at this point. In interviews, Ian had kind of given the impression that the classic pre-patch would be of a similar length, so that players could really get stuck into levelling and getting Dark Portal ready. But with these dates now official, clearly Blizz are of the opinion that everyone would generally just prefer to get the game to launch as soon as possible at this stage, and there were enthusiastic cries of agreement on the forums, where players were chomping at the bit to finally step through the dark portal and into what many consider, after all, to be the single best expansion in World of Warcraft. No, it was a shit show, obviously. A two week pre patch? Could you have given a bigger middle finger to those that have been wanting to get tunes leveled up? Holy fish, Blizzard is literally a mess. Who would ever think this is a good idea? What a stupidious decision. Two week pre patch? Lol, why? Bruh, such a middle finger to many people. How can they? keep making the wrong choices every single time. So as a content creator, sitting here at a cool news desk with a cool news tie, I want to be as objective as I can, and understand the way other people might feel about something. But then, as a player myself, I think it is important to describe my own experience and be true to that as well. And yeah, two weeks is, for sure, shorter than a lot of people were hoping for if they wanted to play with TBC builds in vanilla raids. A fairly niche endeavour, you have to say. Or, much more likely, wanted to level a new Blood Elf or Draenei or Shaman or Paladin from scratch. And I'm trying to get angry? I want to play a shaman in TBCC. I currently have no shaman character in Classic, so I am one of those people impacted by this. But I just can't really get that upset, because frankly, I want Burning Crusade Classic to release, and who cares if I haven't leveled a Draenei by June the 1st. When OG TBC launched, Every Draenei and Blood Elf was level 1 on the opening day. Two weeks of pre-patch levelling is two weeks more than anyone got in 2007, and yeah, maybe Blizz are trying to exploit me and my FOMO to buy a boost to use on my level 46 Shadow Priest, but you know what? If I really had FOMO about that, then I've had, like, seriously, two years to level that dickhead, which I didn't bother doing, did I? Like, I could be levelling her right now if I really cared. I don't need to wait for the pre-patch to start, do I? Nah, she's fine. And you know, what if the pre-patch did last a month? I wonder what people would say then. Oh, what a surprise! Blizz get everyone to resub for pre-patch, which conveniently lasts a month, and then the actual game launches exactly when we all need to pay for another month's sub. Greedy Blizz, I hate them! So no, I'm down with a two-week pre-patch. Personally, get that portal open. I spent long talking about this one. Next, the deluxe edition. It's uh, pretty f expensive, isn't it? Like 70 bucks for a digital only collector's edition, which doesn't even include the game because it doesn't need to include the game because the game is free. Actually seems, what are the exact words I'm looking for here? A shit show, obviously. Lol, what an absolute display of greed. Legitimately disgusting price. I was maybe going to buy some stuff, but I'm actually gonna boycott playing. Blizzard used to command respect, now just a lowly dog humping the money pillow all day long for shame. And look, I'm not ashamed to admit it, I love buying WoW stuff, okay? I've got every WoW Collector's Edition except Vanilla. I've got a Jaina statue. I bought this framed picture of Uther, which... I'm never gonna put this up. Where would I even put this up? I might as well have smoked that money. Basically, I'll buy any old shit because it's a free world and I'm allowed to spend my money on whatever I like. So it means something when I say that no shit, yeah, clearly, Obviously, 70 big ones for this digital deluxe edition is a stupid price. 
It's dumb. It's far too expensive. And yeah, I know if you add all the individual prices up of all the different things, then actually, Taliesin, it comes to much more than it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Obviously, this is overpriced. Literally every human being on Earth, when they saw the price, went, damn, that's too much. And yeah, that is flat out greed from the massive corporation and it makes my eyes roll so hard that I can see my brain. It's greedy, but also it's stupid. Blizzard are stupid pricing this so high because they've clearly overpriced it to the extent that they won't make as much money from it as they would have. For 70 bucks, I need like a statue in there at least. Like a statue of Bobby Kotick eating my ass. No statue, no deal, Blizz. Am I angry? I was angry about the TBC mount. Apparently Currently having 100% speed increase at level 40, which isn't something that you get in game. Normally, mounts at that level have 60% speed increase until you get epic riding at level 60. And when I was told about that on stream, I was like, oh shit, that is bad. Are you sure though? That sounds like the kind of thing that won't make it to life. But I was assured it was definitely going to be like that. And so I was like, oh shit, well then I am mad. That sucks. But it turns out it's not like that. Blizz have clarified that the mount speed will be at 60% until you buy Epic Riding at level 60. So yeah, you don't have to buy another mount. So it's going to save you a fair bit of gold. It's still worth a yikes in my opinion, but it's not Epic Riding speed at level 40. That needs to be clear. So yeah, the price is stupid, offensive crazy high and no one has to pay it like I'm not apologizing for that stupid price here because it is stupid but no one has to pay it the game is free you don't have to buy a deluxe edition or a standard edition or anything besides a standard sub to play it and as someone who doesn't buy shit that I don't want every single day of my life this will just join the big list of some shit that I won't buy like I'm not even gonna just pay for it with my mountains of Shadowlands gold which by the way I totally could should you let it ruin your day well that's up to you but think of it this way if you don't like that this mount exists and you don't want people running around with it in game then honestly, the more laughably expensive it is, the better, to be honest, because you'll see a whole f less of them now than you would have done if the deluxe edition was the price it should have been. Next up, the classic era clone service and its $35 price tag. Wow, seriously, fish off, Blizzard? Oh, sorry, yeah, it was a shit show, obviously. One of the scummiest moves in gaming I've seen. For this price, over my dead body, get wrecked staying away from that, disgusting greedy ass lizards. At this point, we should start talking about prison time for the executives, right? Blizz is not getting a fished penny from me, except the $15 monthly. Okay, come on, when that questionnaire went round asking how much you'd be willing to pay for the clone service, who wrote in $35? Which of you dickheads was it? Once more, to clear up the confusion on this one, and I think that's fair because there definitely is confusion on this. Around 20% of comments that I see are people saying something like, Am I correct in thinking, without any weird wordplay or sophisticated trickery, that we have to pay $35 to play our classic character in TBC? Which is worrying because, yeah, the answer to that is absolutely not. As explained earlier, you want to keep your classic character on the server that it's already on when it changes to TBC? That's free. You want to move your classic character to a classic classic server and stay in vanilla forever? That's free. If you want to clone your character and do both, that's the $35 service. That's just to be clear what we're talking about here and not a defense of the price of the clone service because frankly, no one in their right mind would defend the cost of the clone service. It's absolutely outrageous. Anyone can see that. <laughs> I don't even mind this being a paid service, honestly. It's not free to run a whole bunch of new servers. And even if it were, you don't want every classic classic server full of ghost characters that were copied over and then never touched again. But there is no one who thought this thing was going to cost more than... 10 bucks, 15 if we were unlucky, but $35? I mean, you don't need me to tell you how stupid that is. It's indefensible. And the combination of all of this, the overpriced digital deluxe edition of a free game, the outrageous cloning fee, the lingering bad feelings that many of the community still have about the mere existence of the level 58 boost and the mount compounds into a cloud of ill feeling and general pissed offness that threatens to cast a shadow over TBC classic. And in fact, many will be asking, many are already asking, have Blizzard kind of ruined it? 
Have they pissed on their chips? Shat on their parade? Have Blizzard wanked their goose? People wanted Classic WoW in the first place because they missed the game for sure, but just as much as that because they missed the sense of uncomplicated purity that we remember WoW being back then, before the cash shop, before the Activision takeover, before the 2010s turned gaming in general into the 4K embodiment of late stage corporate capitalism and the numbers obsessed infinite growth shareholder driven model of greed that that often seems to exclusively consist of. To many of those who love it and who fought for it, that's the appeal of Classic as much as what character models it uses or what talent trees it has. And even if by today's standards an optional deluxe edition isn't even that bad, the whole point of Classic for many players is that we shouldn't have to apply today's standards to it. And honestly, it's debatable how pure and free of grasping corporate greed OG TBC really was. There might not have been a cash store back then, but there were highly desirable in-game mount and pet rewards in the World of Warcraft trading card game, which is literal randomized loot boxes. People would get their pitchforks and torches out for Blizz if they tried that shit today, and rightfully so. In fact, that Dark Portal Hearthstone toy was one such reward card a few years later, and and that particular card with the unused code can go for $600 on eBay today, which isn't even an unfair price because at the time you'd expect to have to spend around $500 in booster packs to get it. And holy shit, I hate the cash shop. I'd get rid of it tomorrow if I had the power. But actual loot boxes, which is what those TCG rewards are, make no mistake, is a thousand times worse. But, and I mean this sincerely, the reality of the original Burning Crusade's innocence isn't actually important here. The important thing is that, accurate or not, Blizz are selling TBC Classic in part based on the more innocent and less corporate image that we all have of WoW in 2007 in our heads. And they betray that with cash grab deluxe editions and outrageously inappropriate cloning fees, which, just in case you've forgotten, cost $35. And so if you ask me, is Blizzard ruining Burning Crusade Classic with these actions, well, Honestly, only you know that, and I can't tell you how to feel. Let's be real for a sec, our society is such that every time we buy anything, we are having to weigh up our desire or need for that thing with who was exploited to make it, and where, and who is ultimately profiting from that exploitation. And every time we make one of those decisions, it's personal. I wouldn't blame anyone if this left a sour enough taste in their mouth that they don't want to play Burning Crusade Classic anymore, just as I wouldn't blame anyone for choosing not to play Shadowlands for similar reasons. For me, personally, TBC is easily a good enough game to survive Bobby Kotick shoving a couple of overpriced mounts in there, and the pros of playing a game that I really want to play, in this case, outweigh some of the tone-deaf, almost sad monetization attempts. And obviously that's no defense of those attempts, hopefully the 10 minutes of video before this will have made that clear. But put it this way, in little over a week, the pre-patch of Burning Crusade Classic will go live. Two weeks after that, the Dark Portal will open, and anyone who wants to can play what many hold up as the greatest version of WoW ever made. They're wrong, obviously, there's not a single Tuscar in this, but it's still a good one. For me, at least, and I'm only speaking for myself, it's going to take more than a special edition mount to ruin that. It's going to take more than an unfair cloning fee to ruin that. Nah, nice try, Bobby, but you're not spoiling this one for me. Not yet, at least. Hi guys, it's about this stage of the show, you might be expecting to see some Evertel at the desk doing her bit, and that's exactly what was supposed to happen. Evertel was supposed to be telling you all about the Shadowlands news right now, which, to be fair, isn't all that much news. The main story is probably how Blizzard are fixing the uh, PvP ranking that you need to be able to earn the current season's Vicious Saddle. So that Vicious Spider, currently you have to be 1400 PvP rating for wins to count towards earning it. Blizz are lowering that to 1000 for the rest of the season. Uh, with so many people getting boosted through PvP because of the awesome PvP vendor gear, in 9.0, let's say 1000 is a better representation of the skill level that 1400 has been in previous seasons. Which I guess does kind of make sense, but of course the actual main difference is not just the lower number, it's the fact that you can't lose PvP rating at 1000, and so that really does make the spider a lot easier to earn. And I think that's good news, it's a long old season, why not? In terms of the PTR, we've been finding armor neutral shoulder pad sets dropping in the new Torghast, and they also seem to be available from vendors as well. Those are really awesome, and Bluebot spoiler bot, but 
but there has been raid testing this weekend as well, including at Dormazane featuring one Garrosh Hellscream. So we've got our first look at him in the Shadowlands as well, which I only mentioned because he's still wearing the shoulders. He's still wearing them. No wonder they don't drop, mother. So yeah, basically we're gonna spin that out for about five minutes, but Evertel can't do it because she woke up this morning with really, really bad food poisoning. It was all we could do to hold her up in front of the camera to record the intro to the show. Now, obviously she's just lying down, chilling out, trying to get over it. So massive apologies if you're only here to see her. I count myself among those people, but I promise extra lots of very slow-mo close-ups of Evertel next episode of the Weekly Reset. I guess that makes this a TBC special and I'm okay with that, honestly. So thank you for joining us for this episode. If you liked it, don't thank us. Don't thank Evertel at all, actually. Thank our patrons who give their actual real life money to make all of our videos happen. Guys, thank you so much because without you, there'd be a whole lot less Taliesin and Evertel. And there's already no Evertel, so I mean, goodness. If you didn't like it, downvote the shit out of it. Remember, my name is Evertel. <laughs> no, my name is Taliesin. From me and Evertel and Anirin too. Until next time, cheerio.